people welcome to my channel I am Arpita Karwa in this video I am going to share a very special news with you all so if you have been following my channel on YouTube or if you've been a follower on Facebook Instagram or Twitter you must have seen that recently I shared a picture of my convocation ceremony so I did my graduation from IS University where I was a uh, rank holder and then I did my masters from Rajasthan University where I became the gold medalist so in the convocation I was uh, awarded a gold medal for being the topper of Rajasthan University also I would just like to share that I did not only top the Rajasthan University but all the colleges which are affiliated to Rajasthan University somewhere around 1500 colleges across Rajasthan are affiliated to Rajasthan University and I stood first in the order of merit in amongst all the candidates who were appearing from different colleges so it was a proud moment for me and my family and when I shared this good news with all my students I received overwhelming responses people sending me congratulations greetings and sharing their love sharing their best wishes for all the future endeavors and also there was a constant request by all the students that ma'am even we are in our masters so it would be great if you can just share your study routine a time table maybe what you did because of which you were able to uh, become the topper amongst all the three or four lakh students who were appearing in masters of literature so I thought of making this video and talking about what all things I did in order to secure this position if you have not yet watched my videos where I have talked about how I scored maximum marks in my bachelor's and master's I think you should do it just after this video because uh, in those four videos I have discussed this thing in detail in this video I'm going to share something else which I think was a secret ingredient in my success so without wasting any further time let's jump into the topic and let's see how you can get or secure maximum marks in your master's or in your bachelor's the first important tip which I would like to give all of you is that please don't rely solely on what is being taught in your college or university. Don't rely on your teachers solely. Uh, you know, we have this habit every time that somebody is teaching us we are going to shut our brains and just listen to what the person is saying and just try to write as it is on the day of the exam but then we need to understand that we are not in school anymore teachers are never going to spoon feed us they are just going to give us an overall idea of the text also there are beautiful uh, and uh, remarkable teachers who are going to make us interested in the text for example I still remember in my masters there was a teacher named named Ritu Sen and she was such a wonderful teacher that she taught us King Leo for like 15-20 days and she never actually went to the text and read it. She was trying to build her interest in the text and a text like King Leo which is not so much um, in, fits into my genre of liking I was still so much interested to read it because it was the teacher who was trying to build my interest who was trying to tell me why this text is such a classical text so my idea behind telling you all of this is to convey the message that for you also teachers are going to give you an overall idea about a text about a poem or they are going to even develop your interest in the text but they are not going to give you perfect answers which you can vomit on the day of the exam no that's your job they're just going to give you how to approach the text what all interpretations are possible from that text but the job of a student is to go back home and then look at the text from various other perspectives which we are going to talk soon in this video but for now just Take this idea with yourself that don't rely solely on your teachers. You have to do a job which the teachers are not going to do for you. Now, when it comes to lectures, you just need to sit and absorb the information teacher is giving. But then outside the classroom, there's one important stuff that you have to complete. You have to understand the question paper you have to understand the pattern every university is going to have a different pattern and you have to crack that code the reason why I keep on telling my students to refer to previous year papers is to get an idea of 
what kind of questions are being asked so you can get the previous year paper of your college or universities very easily you can approach your teachers professors or maybe you can go to the college library or maybe it might be available on the college website so you just need to get at least past five years paper when you try to go through the questions you will understand what are the question patterns for example how many short answers are being asked how many long answers are being asked if short answers are asked are they reference to context or they are just about some uh, thematic concern or maybe character build up also you have to understand that what kind of questions are being repeated year after year they will twist and change the language of the question but then the idea and the answer you have to produce remains the same if you crack that code you will understand that okay this text has to be approached from this angle from for example if there's a text like wasteland and they keep on talking about references so you know that while you're reading the poem wasteland while you're preparing notes you have to focus more on references because that is the most asked question on the day of the exam. At the same time, if you go through the question papers, you will figure out that uh, how many questions you have to attempt. For example, for long answers, they give you 10 questions and they ask you have to attempt 7, any 7 out of 10. Now, this becomes interesting because there are so many texts and for a student, it is not possible to read all of them. So, what we can do is we can understand that, okay, from each uh, text, how many questions are asked and accordingly we can decide that which are the text we can not read we can skip also at the same time there are texts which might seem easy but from which way various difficult questions are being asked so you can skip that text and you can focus your energy onto a text which might seem difficult but very easy questions are asked so that is how you need to strategize and finally decide what all text you would be reading for a particular paper the third most important golden tip which I would like to give all my students out there is that please make the habit of preparing notes. I've seen a lot of students buying reference book and then just trying to mug up the data. Understand the fact guys, that is how everybody is doing for that exam. So if you do the same, why are you going to be the topper and not somebody else? So you need to play smart, you need to work hard. What you need to do is that you need to prepare your own notes. After you've understood the pattern, you know exactly what all questions can pop up on the day of the exam. So what you need to do is that you need to go to the Google Baba, the internet, and go to the websites like Cliff Notes, Park Notes, Grade Saver, some amazing literary websites where you'll get data for almost all the important and popular text. For example, you want to prepare notes for Hamlet. Now, if you go to these websites, you'll find that they've given you a summary, they have given you analysis, they've given you character sketches, themes, symbols, motives, and also important references, the background, when Hamlet was written, why it was written, what was the controversy involved, everything is there. You just need to read that and copy and paste the important lines, important points onto a Word document and prepare your own notes. I'm telling you guys, it is not going to take a lot of time, but then the hard work you're doing, that is going to be very fruitful. So what you need to do in order to gauge marks, you need to make notes which nobody else is making. So in your notes, there should be important quotations written, which you have to mug up and reproduce on the day of the exam. Also, there would be intertextual references. Hamlet needs to be compared to some other place, some other text. And then you need to highlight the similarities and the differences. How the character of Hamlet was used by T.S. Eliot so many times in his works. You need to talk about these intertextual links. At the same time, you need to also talk about important references. In Hamlet, if Shakespeare has talked about some important Greek or mythological character, you have to talk about it on the day of the exam. So if you're doing all of this research, your answer is going to stand apart. And that is how you're going to get those extra marks, which will make you a topper. So make sure when you're making notes, you refer to these websites, keep a word document ready, copy and paste under different headlines. If you want to see how I made, made my notes, you just need to WhatsApp on the number displayed above and my team is going to send you some sample notes which I prepared during my master's so that you get an idea of how I was preparing. I never prepared answers like, okay, this if this is a question, this is what I'm going to write. No, I used to put up headings and write points under them and whenever a question came, I knew from which headings I am going to take the data 
data for this particular answer. There were points which were common for every answer. Introduction, conclusion, important quotations, references. I had to write that on the exam sheet irrespective of the question asked. But there were questions where some specific answers were uh, written. For example, if they are asking me about uh, character Hamlet, I am not going to talk about themes and symbols. I am going to directly jump onto the character sketch of Hamlet. But I am also going to include quotations. I am going to include references. I am also going to include some critical comments which were uh, said by some really important writers on this particular text that is Hamlet. So that is how an overall good answer is prepared. The next and the most important thing that I would like to talk about is presentation skills. In spite of the fact that you've done the background search, you've prepared your own notes, what matters is how you present your answer on the day of the exam because that is what the examiner is going to see. He's not going to see the tons of books you've read, the uh, copies of notes you've made, but he's going to see the kind of answer you're writing on the exam sheet. So for that, you need to work on your presentation skills. Now, it is important for you guys to understand that, you know, even if you're preparing a very yummy, very tasty, mouth-watering dish, but you're not presenting it well in front of your guest, nobody's going to like it, okay? Similarly, you might have written a very good answer, but if it is not presentable, if it is not neat, clean, proper, then nobody is going to give a shit about it. It is hard to understand, but I know it is important for you to know that. So what is important? You need to make sure that your answer is divided into good paragraphs. Whenever you're talking about a new idea, break it into a new paragraph. Don't just write and write and write. The teacher is going to not read everything. He has to check a lot of copies. You need to be smart enough to make sure that the teacher exactly uh, gets his eyes on the important data. So for that, you need to have divisions, paragraphs in your answer. Second important thing, whenever you are writing, make sure that any important quotation, any important reference you're giving, you write it in black pen. If the entire answer is in blue pen, highlight it, either underline it, use a highlighter or use a black pen. Make sure that the teacher's eye goes on what you want his eyes to go on. That is how you'll gauge the extra marks. Understand, teacher don't have time to go through each and every sentence. They're just going to open your answer sheet and decide then and there whether the candidate deserves good marks or not. So you, your answers should be eye catchy. Another important aspect, whenever you're writing your answer, make sure you give a proper introduction and a proper conclusion. Okay, in the introduction, you're not going to directly talk about Hamlet. You're first going to talk about Renaissance. You have to talk about Shakespeare. You have to talk about the introduction to theater, how theater began and when and why was Hamlet written. And, uh, you know, when was it first published as a book uh, or when was it first staged? So all these important tips and bits information should be present in the introduction. There should be a good conclusion which should summarize what you are trying to say. So this is how the entire answer should be framed. Make sure you keep these things in mind. Practice writing one or two answers before you actually write on the day of the exam so that you're aware of the mistakes you're making and you can rectify those errors. So I think in this video, I've tried to give you some important points which will give you those extra marks and will make you a topper. I wish you all the best for the upcoming exam. Make sure you do the best. And I would also like to request you that please subscribe to the channel because there's some amazing videos waiting for you in this new year. At the same time, if you've not followed me yet on the social media platform, I think before my next video, you should do that. So the links are given in the description box. Just make sure you uh, go and follow us so that you don't miss out on the important notification. That's it for this video lecture. We'll meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com.